Okay, hello. Sorry about that. Uh, if it isn't one thing, it's another. I had to take a phone call from a member, so I apologize for that. And then, because I left and had to restart the stream, things happened. So, one of the other problems during this pandemic is because everybody in the world is stuck at home and can't go anywhere, everybody in the world is on the internet, and it's uh, having a little trouble keeping up. Uh, apologize again for last night's church service not being live. Uh, YouTube deleted it while we were streaming, saying there was some kind of copyright violation. The AI listens to what you're saying, and if it, they think it violates your term of service, they can delete the video. Uh, but it's all robots do this stuff. And uh, they did say during the pandemic, they don't have as many personnel to do the reviews. So even things that don't have anything wrong with them can sometimes get deleted. So once again, I apologize for that, but you don't want to hear about that. I will upload the video I saved uh, after this uh, morning prayer. And then I'll upload the new uh, video from last night's church service so you can watch it. All that said, let us go ahead and begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 82. God has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods he holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods, son of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, like men you shall die and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all the nations. Our Old Testament lesson this morning is from Genesis 45, the continuation of the story of uh, Joseph's brothers being reconciled with Joseph uh, when they visit Egypt during a famine. And we're beginning uh, in the first verse. Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. He cried, Make everyone go out for me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud so that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, come near to me, please. And they came near. And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father, and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and they shall be near me, you and your children, and your children's children, and your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, for there are yet five years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have do not come to poverty. Poverty. And now your eyes see and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my mouth that speaks to you. 
You must tell my father of all my honor in Egypt and of all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with him. When the report was heard in Pharaoh's house, Joseph's brothers had come, it pleased Pharaoh and his servants. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say to your brothers, Do this, load your beasts and go back to the land of Canaan, and take your father and your households and come to me, and I will give you the best of the land of Egypt, and you shall eat the fat of the land. And you, Joseph, are commanded to do this. Take wagons from the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives, and bring your father and come. Have no concern for your goods, for the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. Then he sent his brothers away, and as they departed, he said to them, Do not quarrel on the way. So they went up out of Egypt and came to the land of Canaan to their father Jacob. And they told him, Joseph is still alive, and he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. And his heart became numb, for he did not believe them. But when they told him all the words of Joseph which he had said to them, and when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of their father Jacob revived. And Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. Our writing this morning is from St. Thomas Aquinas. The argument against the power of Christ's passion. The devil exercises his power over men by tempting them and molesting their bodies. But even after the passion, he continues to do the same to men. Therefore, we are not delivered from his power through Christ's passion. Aquinas responds, God permits the devil to tempt men's souls and harass their bodies, yet there is a remedy provided for humanity through Christ's passion, whereby a person can safeguard himself against the enemy's assaults, so as not to be dragged down into the destruction of everlasting death. And all who resisted the devil previous to the passion in Old Testament times were enabled to do so through faith in the passion, although it was not yet accomplished. A further argument is put forth, according to Hebrews 10.14, for by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. The might of Christ's passion endures forever. But deliverance from the devil's power is not found everywhere, since there are still idolaters in many regions of the world, nor will it endure forever because in the time of Antichrist he will be especially active in using his power to the hurt of men. Because it is said to him in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, the coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception. Consequently, it seems that Christ's passion does not deliver the human race from the power of the devil. Aquinas responds, God permits the devil to deceive men by certain persons, and in times and places according to the hidden motive of his judgments. Still, there is always a remedy provided through Christ's passion for defending themselves against the wicked snares of the demons, even in Antichrist's time. But if any man neglect to make use of this remedy, it detracts nothing from the efficacy of Christ's passion. We now join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The prayer for Thursday is for the church and her pastors, for teachers, deaconesses, and other church workers, for missionary and all who serve the church, and for the salutary use of the Lord's Supper. can't find. Okay. Oh, I can't believe I lost my page. I can't believe. What have I done? Oh, is it in the wrong place? Sorry about that. We pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, true King of heaven and earth, you promised your church that the gates of hell would not prevail against her, and you still cause your word to be preached and your holy sacraments to be administered among us. But ah, O Lord, the sins of your people obscure the majesty of your bride. Your holy vineyard is trampled and your blessed sacrifice stands neglected. Many think themselves strong and despise the life-giving food that you have ordained for your people for the forgiveness of their sins. Pardon all of our arrogance, and do not come to us in wrath to remove the lamp of your word before our eyes. O Lord, we pray you, visit this vine which you once established for yourself, and renew us with the sun of your mercy and the water of eternal life. Give us a great hunger for the food of your true body and blood, and let all your faithful people ever be found in the Apostles' doctrine, in the fellowship, in the breaking of your bread, and in the prayers. We implore you, O Lord, for our altar, that it may ever be a place where the medicine of eternal life, the forgiveness of our sins, strengthens us in body and soul, that disbelief and impenitence may stay far from all who come there, so that they may not eat and drink to their own judgment. O eternal High Priest, let the fruit of your Spirit grow in us, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and chastity. Cause us to live in holy conduct toward one another to the glory of your holy name, here in time and hereafter in eternity. For you live and reign with the Father and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, by your bountiful goodness, release us from the bonds of our sin, which by reason of our weakness we have brought upon ourselves, that we may stand firm until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, give us grace to trust you during this time of illness and distress. In mercy, put an end to the pandemic that afflicts us. Grant relief to those who suffer and comfort all who mourn. Sustain all medical personnel in their labors and cause your people ever to serve you in righteousness and holiness. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And finally, we join together in Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.